Hi, I'm Jay from Personal Bar Prep, and this is Simplified, our series designed to simplify tough subjects on the California bar exam. Today I'm going to simplify for you substantive due process, which is in the 14th Amendment. So let's get started. 14th Amendment provides that no law shall be arbitrary. So when the government passes any law that is a total deprivation of some right, we have a substantive due process issue. There's two major things we're looking for. One, government conduct. Did the government pass legislation? And number two, does that legislation totally ban some right that citizens were previously enjoying? If the answer to both of those is yes, we then have a substantive due process problem. The resolution of the problem is that no law can be arbitrary, which means that any law that offends substantive due process must be analyzed through either strict scrutiny or the rational basis test. And we choose which standard of review to apply based upon the nature of the right. So, if the right is what's known as a fundamental right, then we apply strict scrutiny. And the fundamental rights are those rights that are found in the Bill of Rights, as well as the right to travel within the United States, the right to procreate, the right not to procreate, the right to live with your children and have custody of your children, the right to marry, and the right to vote. All of those are fundamental rights. And any law that the government passes that infringes upon one of those rights, the government must demonstrate that the law is necessary to achieve a compelling government interest. In other words, it must pass strict scrutiny. Any other right will be given the rational basis test. So if the right has to do with the right to go bowling or the right to go to get an education or the right to medical care, None of those are fundamental rights, and so the job is the plaintiff's burden to show that the law is not rationally related to a legitimate government interest. Let me give you an example on a bar exam. A while ago, the bar tested on the following problem. There was a local high school. That high school or board of education was experiencing increased teen dropouts. And so the school or the, the board of education passed a rule. And the rule was basically this. If you are a pregnant student under the age of 18 and unmarried, you will be removed from your regular curriculum and placed in the AEP or the Alternative Education Program. One of the students who was pregnant and was removed filed suit. And she claimed, among other things, that this was a violation of her substantive due process rights to procreate. And so our argument is that the government must then show that if, in fact, it is interfering with her right to procreate, that the law is necessary to achieve a compelling government interest. And so we look at the interest, and the interest the government has is to make sure that these unwed pregnant teens don't drop out of school and that they become effective parents. In other words, it tries to teach them how to cope with the vicissitudes of being an unmarried pregnant teen in school. I don't think that that rises to the level of a compelling government interest. Clearly, it's important. But when I think of a compelling government interest, I think of something like domestic tranquility or laws that affect national security. Okay, this clearly is not of that level. If, however, it was, the next question we would ask ourselves is, is it necessary? Is this the only way to protect these children and make sure they get a good education? And the answer to that is no. Obviously, you don't have to take them out of their entire curriculum. You can give them an extra class or an after-school class or a weekend class or some take-home assignments, assemblies, etc. There's a host of ways that the government can accomplish this short of infringing upon the right to bear children. So you would conclude that that rule does not pass strict scrutiny and thus would be unconstitutional. But the government's going to respond, and the government's response is going to be, we are not concerned with her right to bear children. What we're affecting here is her right to an education. And since education is not a fundamental right, the burden becomes the plaintiffs to show that this is not rationally related 
to a legitimate government interest. Well, clearly the government has a legitimate interest in making sure that pregnant teens finish school and are effective parents. That's clearly a legitimate government interest. And creating a program designed specifically to do that is also rationally related to that interest. Therefore, we would conclude that if this law affects merely the right to an education, which is not a fundamental right, it does not violate the Substantive Due Process Clause, and as a result, the law would be perfectly constitutional. That's what you're looking for when you're discussing Substantive Due Process. Do we have government conduct? What is the level of interference? And once we determine what the government is interfering with, we then apply the appropriate standard of review. If it's a fundamental right, it's going to get strict scrutiny. All other rights are going to get the rational basis test. You do your analysis, you come to a conclusion, and you move on to the next issue. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or share it. And if you have any questions about substantive due process, leave a comment. Or if you have anything else you'd like us to cover, leave a comment there too. Personal Bar Prep is the small group bar prep for the California Bar. And if you like this video, you're going to love our course. You can find a link to our website with more information in the description below. Thanks for watching.